When the iris blur is used, it simulates a shallow depth of field effect to your picture, regardless of or irrespective of the camera or lens used. Pins are used to set fo a focus area around where the blurring will occur. This is the opposite of a field blur. The default blur pin will make the entire image slightly blurry around an in-focus ellipse. And you see here, um, there is your pin and here is your ellipse. Increasing the intensity of the blur causes the area around the in-focus ellipse to become more and more blurry, um, depending on how far you drag that slider over. So you can see an example of the default setting blur. And then over here on the right, you can see as it's increased the amount of blur happening. So let me take a little moment here to go over to Photoshop to show you. So I have the same image pulled up, which you can find on the Open, Open Graphic Arts website um, to use, or you can use any of your images. And again, to get to the blur, you want to go up to the filter menu and choose the blur gallery, and the iris filter is the one just below. So here we are with the default settings, and here's the panel for the field blur or the iris blur. And you notice here that there, each of the blurs are in this drop-down menu, and here the iris blur here is checked. So here in this panel, I can just drag and increase that blur and decrease that blur. Now there's something really cool about this effect, and let me increase the blur here a little bit more, um, that, and I'll show you. So, so number one, you can take this pin and if you put the cursor over it, you can actually take the whole thing and move it around from where its default settings are. You can also change the size and or rotate depending on your object that you want to um, be, have the blurring created around. Um, and see this middle dot here, these middle dots, this is your transition edge, so you can actually make the transition um, longer or shorter depending on that blur effect that you want. So if I leave it here, this is where the blur will actually start, and then this is where that the full blur effect will be on the outer end of the outside ellipse. So I can move this back and forth and increase that blur um, depending on the effects that I want.